All right, guys, so in this video, we are going to go over a couple of really cool things. We've got a new firmware release from At Games, and on top of that, Wildcoder has given us yet another optimized core. I'm gonna show you guys how to get Sega CD up and running on your Legends Ultimate Arcade cabinet. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. Okay guys, so we're gonna go ahead and get the firmware information out of the way first. We got a new release as of today, and there's gonna be a few things that we've gotten. The first big change here is that now the cabinet is going to allow up to five different leaderboard entries per game. The previous system that we had up until today prevented you from uploading any more than one submission. What'll happen is if you tried to submit a second one that was lower than your top score, it would just say, hey, no, you've already got a high score, no need to send this in. Now what's going to happen is you are allowed to have up to five different leaderboard entries and the way it's going to be differentiated is that it will still be linked to your ArcadeNet account, but the three different letters that you use to identify your high score initials will be able to be different. Going off of that as well, we've now got five more built-in arcade games that have been added to the global leaderboard feature. Those games include Black Widow, Joe and Mac Returns, Side Pocket, Super Real Darwin, and Tetris Plus 2. So these are actually some really fun games. I know a lot of people are going to really enjoy it. And to be honest, I'm really impressed with some of the high scores that we've seen so far. So definitely, this is an awesome, awesome feature. There are a couple new features as well that I do want to mention. First one is now we actually have a USB drive playlist feature. So if you go into your settings and under attract mode, you're actually going to have a section specifically where you can toggle on to allow your USB to filter through more than one video for attract mode. What you would do is you would load up say four or five videos and if you want them in a specific order, you have to name them one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Otherwise, it's just going to play them in alphabetical order, but that is kind of cool That way you're not stuck with the exact same video constantly looping on repeat over and over again if you use that feature at all and The last new feature that we're going to talk about here is the menu navigation has improved if you had noticed before when they had implemented being able to filter through pages using the left and right motion on the joystick, you would notice that going to the right hand side worked perfectly fine, but going to the left hand side when you got to the end of the page and you pressed left, it would take you into the filtering menu and then you would have to press left again to turn that page. What they've done is they've eliminated that altogether. Now when you go left or right at the edge of the pages, it does properly rotate into the next page, but you cannot access the filtering section anymore once you've entered into the game section. You're gonna need to press the menu button on your control deck, and that will pop you into the filter bar. So it might take a little bit of getting used to, but I think actually the navigation's a little bit cleaner this way. Alternatively, if you don't wanna press the menu button, if you press up to go into the main header, then you press down again, you'll be able to get into the filter bar that way too. But that's more or less it for this release. Now I'm gonna switch over to my computer and I'm gonna show you guys how to get Sega CD up and running. So here we are, again, a huge, huge shout out to Wild Coder. Now I'm gonna leave a link to his YouTube channel in the description down below. Go on down there, subscribe to his channel. Whenever he develops new cores or new ports, he will be putting videos up and it's a good way to stay on top of these sort of things. So it's not a bad way to stay up to date with the latest new features that are gonna be coming out. So getting back into it, I'm sure you guys may have seen a couple other videos out. I know a couple of the other YouTubers have done this video already, but I figured I would bundle it in with the new firm more release information. Wild Coder has optimized the Pico Drive core, and if you are familiar with modding any of the classic consoles or even RetroArch at all, you know that there are two main cores used for Sega CD. You've got either Genesis Plus GX or you have the Pico Drive core. Wild Coder has decided he wanted to optimize the Pico Drive core, and that's totally fine. Now I'm gonna mention it's not 100% tested with multi disc games. Some may work, some may not. So keep that in mind when you are building your library library, you might want to focus on single disc games. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is actually create a bunch of folders on our USB drive. As you guys can see, I've got my USB drive 
plugged into my computer and I've got a folder called content. Now I created this folder when we were working on some of the other ports that we did, for example, flashback. So if you haven't done any of those things yet, you are going to need to create this folder. Next, we're gonna jump into that content folder. And as you can see, I do have my ports folder. That's where I had the flashback went into. But what we need to do is actually create two new folders here. The first folder we're going to create, we are actually going to label it BIOS, B-I-O-S. And the second folder that we're going to create is going to be console, C-O-N-S-O-L-E-S. -S. And I'm sure you guys can probably get an idea of what we're doing here. Sega CD required a BIOS file in order to run the games similar to PlayStation 1 or any of the CD-based consoles. So we need to make sure that we load them in. Before we mess around with the consoles folder, let's go ahead and load up our BIOS folder. So I've got my Sega CD BIOS files right over here. And I do gotta say, I cannot give you guys a link or access to them. This is what they're called, BIOS underscore CD underscore E, BIOS underscore CD underscore J, and BIOS underscore CD underscore U. You can go ahead and do some Google searches. I'm sure you'll find them, but I cannot give you any direction as to where to locate them. And this will not work without the BIOS files. So we're gonna go ahead and grab those files and we're gonna dump them into our new BIOS file on our USB drive. It shouldn't take very long, they're relatively small files. So we can go ahead and close out of that. And now we've got our BIOS files prepped and ready. Now we're gonna go back to our content folder and we're gonna go into our consoles folder. Once we're in our consoles folder, we need to create a new folder. That folder is going to be called Sega space dash Sega CD. And it is case sensitive. So Sega has to be with a capital S, then you need a space, then a dash, then Sega again with a capital S, and then CD, all capital as well. So that's very important. It must be labeled Sega dash Sega CD with a capital S on both Segas and capitals for C and D. Next, we're gonna jump into there, and this is actually where we're gonna load up all of our games. Now, it's important to note, because we are using Pico Drive, we cannot use CHD files. We have to use BinQ or ISO and Q. So as you can see here, I've actually got four games right over here ready to go. I've got Cadillacs and Dinosaur, Star Wars Rebel Assault, Snatcher, and Batman Returns. We're gonna grab these games, and we're gonna dump them into this folder here on our USB drive. So this is gonna take a couple of minutes. I'm just gonna go ahead and fast forward through this. Okay, so now that our game files have completely loaded up onto our USB drive, we have to make some quick edits. So as you can see, Batman Returns also has USA in brackets right beside it. And that's not gonna work. We need to get rid of any of the special characters. Additionally, there is also a character limit as to the total number of letters you can have in a title for the Legends Ultimate to recognize properly. So we want to stay under 40 characters, I believe. And as you can see, things like Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, the second Cataclysm is not going to work. So we're going to have to modify these things as well. First thing that we're going to do is jump into Batman Returns and we're gonna have to change the Q file. So the Q file is going to essentially be the instructions that is going to tell the core where to find the games, where to find the music tracks, things like that. So in this situation, the only thing that we actually have to change is the Q file. You can leave all the bin files or the WAV files or the ISOs or whatever it is in the folder completely by themselves. You don't have to make any adjustments, but the Q file does need to have those changes. It cannot have those special characters and it can't be too long. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the brackets and the USA from this title. And as you can see, we left the .q. We wanna leave the extension there, but whatever we change the Q name to, we also have to change the folder to. So we're gonna go ahead and change that. We're gonna get rid of the USA and the brackets here. And now Batman Returns should be good to go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change the rest of the folders and the other Q files, and we're gonna skip ahead. Okay, so as you can see, we've now finished adjusting all the folders, all the Q files. I removed all the special characters from everything, and I also adjusted the name of Cadillacs and Dinosaurs so that way it wasn't so long, and it should function now. All that's really left for us to do is to create some UCE files and uh, get this thing loaded up. So we need to jump into our add-on tool, and it's important to mention that with the add-on tool, you need to be on the latest version. This is very, very important. You need to be on version 2.24. It will not work on the older ones. If you don't have the latest version, I will leave links in the description so you guys can go ahead and grab it and install that. 
Additionally, what we're going to need is box art and bezel art. Now I've pre-downloaded everything and just as a reminder, they need to be in PNG format and specifically for the bezel art, it needs to be no bigger than 1280 by 720 in terms of resolution. The bezel that I'm gonna use is just a standard Sega CD bezel and I will use the same bezel for all of my Sega CD games. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that out and what we're gonna do is go ahead and choose our emulator core. So that's gonna be right on our desktop. This is the Pico drive. Then we are going to grab our bezel art again, right on the desktop, no big deal. Box art, we're gonna go into our artworks folder and we're gonna do Batman Returns. And then grabbing our game. So this is important. The game will be located on our USB drive because that's where we moved it. It's inside of our content folder, inside of our console folder, and inside of our Sega-Sega CD folder right over here. We've got our Batman Returns game. We're gonna double click on that and we need to select only the Q file. Now out of the gate, you're gonna see it's not visible and you can't actually see it. We need to change the extension from .bin down to any file. This will allow us to see the Q file and we can go ahead and select that. As you can see, we've now have all of the categories filled out. The game title will automatically be filled in once you select your game. And now all we need to do is build this package. So we're gonna select that and we are going to save it on the root of our USB drive. Now, when we go to the root of our USB drive, we are also going to want to create a folder here just so it stays categorized. We're gonna go ahead and create that new folder and we're gonna label it Sega CD. Now this isn't that important what you label it. You can really label it whatever you want. This is just how it's going to be visible for you when you open up the add-on feature inside of your cabinet. So I'm just gonna leave it as Sega CD. Then we're gonna save our UCE file inside of this folder and it's gonna build. Now this won't take long as you can see it's already finished. Uh, because everything's relatively small and you're not actually loading the game into it, it's a very quick process. So now we just have to repeat the process with all of the other games and then we are good to jump onto our cabinet. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quickly. All right, so now we've got all our UCEs built. They are in our Sega CD directory. We're more or less good to go. Now, before we plug this into our arcade cabinet and get this tested, I want to mention that in my last video, we had done a Scum VM tutorial. Now, Wildcoder had actually updated the course, so you can create your own Scum VM games now. I'm gonna leave a link in the description to one of his videos with the updated instructions if there are games that you want to set up all for yourself. Now let's go ahead and get this USB popped into our arcade cabinet. Okay, so here we are on our cabinet. We need to make sure that our USB drive is plugged in and we need to navigate to the BOIOG section and then we need to select the add-on feature. Once that's loaded up, you guys are gonna see on the left-hand side, we now have a Sega CD option. We're gonna go ahead and select that and when we do, we're gonna see all of the games that we just loaded up. So as you can see, I've got my four games here and they're pretty much good to go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into Batman Returns first, and I'm gonna show you guys a couple of things that you may notice. So let's go ahead and get it loaded up. So the very first thing that you're gonna notice is that it's going to run the BIOS system. You're gonna have the Sega CD logo come up, and uh, if you leave it the way it is, it's actually gonna boot directly into the game. So if we do that and we just leave it alone, it will start the game on its own without actually pressing any of the buttons on the control deck. Now alternatively, if we go ahead and try to boot up our game and we do press something on the control deck, it's going to take us to the Sega CD menu. And from here, we actually have to select the CD-ROM button in order to run our game. So either way, it's not a big deal. Just so you guys know, if you do end up on the screen, it's totally fine. Just hit that CD button and your game is gonna launch. But that's more or less it. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys a couple of these games running and then we're gonna wrap up the video. Over. Now the other way. Good. 
And that's more or less it. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you did not like it. But that's all I've got for you. Thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.